Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks and we're ready for our March the 2nd lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. I don't know that it matters, but we're in the year 2022. I don't know if I've said that. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. This is from the original edition, lesson 61. Who is the light of the world except God's Son? And who are you except God's Son and daughter? But in the Course in Miracles terminology, we're all sons. <laughs> uh, one of the things we're going to tell ourselves many times today, I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. Isn't that a nice thing to say? I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. Okay, well, let's keep that in mind as we read this today. I am the light of the world. Who is the light of the world except God's Son? This, then, is merely a statement of the truth about myself. It is the opposite of a statement of pride, of arrogance, or of self-deception. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Here you, I am God's Son, and it's the opposite of a statement of pride, arrogance, or self-deception. It does not describe the self you have made. It does not refer to any of the characteristics with which you have endowed your idols. It refers to you as you were created by God. It simply states the truth. <laughs> I am the light of the world. It's not the ego self that's the light of the world. It's, the, it's referring to you as you were created by God. It simply states the truth. To the ego, today's idea is the epitome of self-glorification. But the ego does not understand humility, mistaking it for self-debasement. Humility consists of accepting your role in salvation and taking no other. What is your role in salvation? Forgiveness. Be in the light. You know, I'm going to look ahead. Look at our next lesson or two. It's going to be... Forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. <laughs> so anyway, I'm the light of the world, and we got all this joy to share with others, and we get to keep it because we know how to forgive. When we see our, our light dimmed or the possibility of being dimmed, we know how to exchange the idol for the truth of who we really are as God created us. Humility consists of accepting your role in salvation and taking no other, it is not humility to insist that you cannot be the light of the world, if that is the function God assigned to you. It is only arrogance that would assert this function cannot be for you. And arrogance is always of the ego. True humility requires that you accept today's idea because it is God's voice which tells you it is true. This is a beginning step in accepting your real function on earth. It is a giant stride toward taking your rightful place in salvation. It is a positive assertion of your right to be saved and an acknowledgement of the power that is given you to save others. You will want to think about this idea as often as possible today. I am the light of the world. It is the perfect answer to all illusions and therefore to all temptation. It brings all the images you have made about yourself to the truth and helps you depart in peace, unburdened, and certain of your purpose. <laughs> as many practice periods as possible should be undertaken today, although each one need not exceed a minute or two, they should begin with telling yourself, I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. And he says, then take a minute or two and just reflect on what, what that means in your life. Have it, have it be applied to all the happenings of your day. At least every hour, say it to yourself today. And, what is that? and he's also going to tell us to be sure to say it in the morning and the evening, as close as you can to bedtime and soon after you get up as possible. Then think about these statements. I am the light of the world. This is my only function. That is why I'm here. 
Then think about these statements for a short while, preferably with your eyes closed if the, if the situation permits. If you're driving down the road, you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> Let a few related thoughts come to you and repeat the idea to yourself if your mind wanders away from the central thought. Be sure both to begin and end the day with a practice period. He's not asking too much, but he does want us to take a few moments as soon as we get up to say, I am the light of the world. Hey, you know, I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. Then think about these statements for a short while, prefer with your eyes closed if the situation permits. Let a few related thoughts come to you and repeat the idea to yourself if your mind wanders away from the central thought. Be sure both to begin and end the day with a practice period. Thus you will awaken with an acknowledgement of the truth about yourself, reinforce it throughout the day, and turn to sleep as you reaffirm your function and your only purpose here. These two practice periods may be longer than the rest if you find them helpful and want to extend them. There you go. So he's suggesting we take, you know, maybe five minutes. If you really find it helpful, take 15. But, you know, take, take um, at least take two, though, <laughs> in the morning and then in the evening. Today's idea goes far beyond the ego's petty views of what you are and what your purpose is. As the bringer of salvation, this is obviously necessary. This is the first of a number of giant strides or giant steps we will take in the next few weeks. This is the first of a number of giant steps we will take in the next few weeks. Try today to begin to build a firm foundation for these advances. You are the light of the world. God has built his plan for the salvation of his son on you. I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. Okay, so let's be this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> you remember that song we used to sing when we were kids? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, I am the light of the world. Okay, let's go take a look in our uh, text reading, and we're ready for, uh, in chapter 14, section 2, guilt and guiltlessness. Is that where we're at? Yep, that's where we're ready to start. While you're turning there, let me just tell you about where I'm sitting and a particular uh, uh, tomato. I'm sitting amongst these logs. Can you see those logs? Yeah, I think you can see them over there. It's a little bright out here in the sunshine. I've been peeling them today, and uh, I usually just peel one a day. They, they take some effort. Um, it doesn't take a few minutes, but, you know, probably peel one, and the whole thing, you got to roll it once or twice to get, you know, you always have the top on top that you're peeling. And uh, here's a, called a draw knife. That's what I use for peeling it. And uh, you get, get kind of pretty good at peeling the bark off with a draw knife. And, uh, and then, of course, you, know, you always want a hatchet or an axe, both, actually, when you're doing something like that. I've got a pry bar stuck in the ground. I think you can see it over there. Let me get out of the way so you can see. And then a, a log turner that holds my log up in the air. So that's the one I'm peeling right now. You can see one right up in the air. And I'm ready to turn it over and peel the other side. All right. Anyway, that's going to be my main support post for my... Uh, um, multi-sided cabin. I haven't really decided how I'm going to proceed on how many sides or exactly where I'm even going to put it. Maybe put it right here where I'm sitting. It's kind of what I was planning, but I'm not so sure. I'm, just, I'm waiting for guidance on all that, just having fun. Okay, so anyway, those are uh, the Quercus stellatus, post oaks here in the Ozarks. I'm going to use these for my main four pillars around the center of my uh, uh, Oh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, like I said, I haven't really decided what you call it. It's going to be an earthen, earthen structure. Okay, Cherokee purple tomatoes. They're an 80-day tomato, an old Cherokee, Cherokee heirloom, pre-1890 variety. Beautiful, deep, dusky purple, sink, or purple-pink color. 
superb, sweet flavor, and very large sized fruit. Try this one for real old time tomato flavor. Our favorite dark tomato and one of our best selling varieties. And I'm reading this to you out of the Baker Creek catalog, which I need to get an order in. I wanted to already have my tomatoes planted, you know, in the house, in the window. And here I haven't even got all the seeds yet. So if you've got seeds, put them out. You can go ahead and plant your tomatoes and peppers in the house in a south facing window. And uh, here in two weeks, we'll be ready to plant potatoes. And we'll talk a little bit about some varieties of potatoes you might want to consider. And usually you can get those at your garden supply close at hand. All right, well, we'll talk about all that stuff as we come up. Um, let me get out of the way this way. You can see that log right there. I think you can see that log. Um, right here is, you know, one that's not been uh, peeled yet. So these are about, oh, about 25 foot to where I stopped peeling them. I'll end up cutting that top part off. and not decided exactly how small I wanted them to go, so I left them a little long when I brought them up here. Okay, guilt and guiltlessness. The guiltless and the guilty are totally incapable of understanding one another. The guilty or the guiltless and the guilty are totally incapable of understanding one another. Each perceives the other as like himself, making them unable to communicate because each sees the other unlike the way he sees himself. God can communicate only to the Holy Spirit in your mind because only he shares the knowledge of what you are with God. And only the Holy Spirit can answer God for you for only he knows what God is. Everything else that you have placed within your mind cannot exist. For what is not in communication with the mind of God has never been. Communication with God is life. Nothing without it is at all. Isn't that something? So it's only the Holy Spirit's voice is what's real. Everything else is not real. Only truth is true. The simplest of all lessons and yet very difficult for the twisted mind to understand. The only part of your mind that has reality is the part which links you still with God. You, would you have all of it transformed into a radiant message of God's love? Would you have all of it transformed into a radiant message of God's love? to share with all the lonely ones who denied him with you? God makes this possible. Would you deny his yearning to be known? You yearn for him. You yearn for God. As he for you. This is, for, this is forever changeless. Accept then the immutable. Leave the world of death behind and return quietly to heaven. There is, nothing the val there is nothing of value here and everything of value there. I got a horse that's right up here. Let's hope he just, this is Dallas. <laughs> you come up here to say hi. Listen to the Holy Spirit and to God through him. Here, back up, back up, back up. Go on. Listen to the Holy Spirit and to God through him. He speaks to you, to you. He speaks of you to you. There is no guilt in you, for God is blessed in his Son as the Son is blessed in him. Each one of you has a special part to play in the atonement, but the message given to each to share is always the same. God's Son is guiltless. God's Son is guiltless. Would you please back up? Each one teaches the message differently and learns it differently. Yet until he teaches it and learns it, he will suffer the pain of dim awareness that his true function remains unfulfilled in him. The burden of guilt is heavy. <laughs> There's nothing there for you to eat. The burden of guilt is heavy, but God would not have you bound by it. His plan for your awakening is as perfect as yours is fallible. You know not what you do, but he who knows is with you. His gentleness is yours, and all the love you share with God, 
he holds in trust for you. He would teach you nothing except how to be happy. Blessed son of a holy blessing father, joy was created for you who can condemn whom God has blessed. There is nothing in the mind of God that does not share his shining innocence. Creation is the natural extension of perfect purity. Your only calling here is to devote yourself with active willingness to the denial of guilt in all its forms. That's all we want to do is deny guilt in all its forms. To accuse is not to understand. The happy learner of the atonement becomes the teachers of the innocence that is the right of all that God created. The happy learners of the atonement become the teachers of the innocence that is the right of all that God created. Deny them not what is their due, for you will not withhold it from them alone. The inheritance of the kingdom is the right of God's Son, given him in his creation. Do not try to steal it from him, or you will ask for guilt and will experience it. Protect his purity from every thought that would steal it away and keep it from his sight. Bring innocence to light in answer to the call of the atonement. Never allow purity to remain hidden, but shine away the heavy veils of guilt within which the Son of God has hidden himself from his own sight. So never allow purity to remain hidden, but shine away the heavy veil of guilt <laughs> within which the Son of God has hidden himself from his own sight. We are all joined in the atonement here, and nothing else can unite us in this world, so will the world of separation slip away and full communication be restored between the Father and the Son. And par last paragraph we're going to read today, paragraph 9. The miracle acknowledges the guiltlessness which must have been denied to produce need of healing. Oh, listen to that again. The miracle acknowledges the guiltlessness which must have been denied to produce need of healing. <laughs> Do not withhold this glad acknowledgement for hope of happiness and relief from suffering of every kind lie in it. Who is there but wishes to be free of pain? He may not yet have learned how to exchange his guilt for innocence, nor realize that only in this exchange can freedom from pain be his. Yet those who have failed to learn need teaching, not attack. To attack those who have need of teaching is to fail to learn from them. To attack those who have need of teaching is to fail to learn from them. Okay, we'll pick up on paragraph 10 tomorrow. Uh, today, and I hope the horses didn't distract you. They definitely distracted me. <laughs> I am the light of the world. That is my only function. That is why I am here. Anyway, they're just a bunch of pets. Hey, these, these two, you can't really see them really well, can you? I guess I could take just a minute and let you visit with the horses. That's, that's Dallas right there. And, I, and this, I guess we've been calling this one here coffee. Anyway. Uh, you all, thank you so much for joining me and the horses today. Until tomorrow, I am the light of the world. That is my function. That is why I'm here. <laughs>